dance now? Did you do, do you want to do that dance again? No, okay, we, don't, we won't do that. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Jonathan, I need you up on stage. Come on. All right, so I'll take a couple older guys then. You don't have to, okay. So, do you know the Bible? A little bit? Okay, good, 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 good. So, uh, in the Bible, there's uh, some characters that, uh, that were actively involved. Uh, and, and so, I want, we're going to go to Genesis. If you've got your Bible, you can turn to the book of Genesis. And if you're watching online, you wonder what's going on. It's just me. <laughs> I love the Word of God, and I love being able to express the Word of God in practical ways. So, who do you think we're talking about in Genesis? Any ideas? Abraham, Abraham was one child. Adam, okay, let, 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 me, let me give you a hint, just a second. I think I have a hint back here someplace. Uh, now, who do you think this, who do you think I'm talking about now? Joseph, very good. I, I, that's wonderful. Okay, great. Great, great. You, you did so well just answering those questions. That's great, great, great. Okay, good, good, good. So we're talking about Joseph today. And, uh, hi, Joseph. Joseph was a, a, a young man that had a bunch of brothers. Do you remember how many brothers he had? He had 10 older brothers and one younger brother. So why don't you guys be brothers over there, okay? Just go over this side. You can be the brothers, okay? So get over there. Yeah, you can stay over this side for me, okay? We can stay here, okay? So, so he had a bunch of brothers, right? And his brothers, how many have brothers? Do you love your brothers? Do your brothers love you, Joseph? You hope so, but you're wrong. Okay, so the brothers did not like Joseph. How come? Because he got the, was the favorite. It was a favorite of the dad. And so when there's a favorite, sometimes there's problem, right? And so what happened is he, God spoke in a dream to Joseph. What was that dream about? You remember? Oh, yes, about some hay, about some grain. The dream was that you were out, remember this, you were out there in a field and you're working with your brothers. All the brothers were, were pulling grain and pulling it all together and tying it up. And then something happened. Do you remember what it was? Um, my brother's hay started bowing down to mine. Exactly. Brothers, you had your hay and your, your grain that you put together ended up bowing down to Joseph. Was that a good deal? Did you like that? Not at all. Now, they got a little upset about that. And Joseph shared that dream with the brothers, and the brothers got angrier. Is that right? Did you get angry? With big smiles on your faces? Oh, man, alive. See, when you're a Christian, you, have to, you can't smile. You can't stop smiling. And then you had another dream. Do you remember what the other dream was? Well, the sun and the moon bowed down to you as well. And then all of the others, the, 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 the other brothers, the planets, bowed down again. And do you know what you did that time? You told them again. <laughs> did you love her more and love Joseph more after he, he told you? Not at all. So one day what happened was, Dad said, Joseph, I want you to go see your brothers. They're over in a, another area with the, the cattle. And so go over and see how they're doing. So Joseph came over. And guess what happened? Guess what happened with those brothers? They got together in a huddle. Huddle, 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 huddle. And guess what they said? What did they say? Let's put him in his head. Let's throw him in a well. They're going to kill him. They're going to throw him in a well. Let's stab him. Let's throw him in a well. Let's throw him in a well. Everything but shoot him. Okay, that's what they're going to do. And then they actually went and got a hold of Joseph. And they grabbed him, and then they tore that coat off. <laughs> and they threw Joseph in a well. There must be a well around here someplace. Threw him in a well. Wow, and there's Joseph in a well, and then the brothers all went home. Brothers all went home. 
Oh, that, yeah, well, left, left Joseph there all by himself in a well, could not get out. And some traders came by. And one of your brothers sold you into slavery. What kind of family is this? So then, uh, where do we have any traders around? You're almost there. So, so then, then they, they uh, I guess that's me. We went ahead and we're going to put them on a block and we're going to sell them to... Who's, who are you going to sell them to? Okay, who bought them? Who said Potiphar? Almost got him. So then got, Joseph got sold to Potiphar. Wow. Potiphar was, the, uh, was one of the chief guards of the Pharaoh. And so he's a very important man. So he was there and he, did you work hard? Yes. And God brought favor to Joseph in Potiphar's house. So much so that Potiphar said, anything you want, you're in charge of the whole house. Except for Potiphar's wife. Are you Potiphar's wife? <laughs> you don't want to be Potiphar's wife, do you? No. Okay. There's an imaginary Potter's wife here. Because Bob, Potiphar's wife had the hot, excuse me, Potiphar's wife was attracted to Potiphar. No, to, no, you're not Potiphar. To Joseph and wanted Joseph to sleep with her. Oh, man alive. Can you imagine the temptation? And what did you say? No. No. Is that how you said it? I think you were a little louder than that. No. Absolutely. No way. <laughs> Would not do it, right? So then Potiphar's wife, that's not that person, you know, not, not there, okay. Potiphar's wife said, um, I'm going to lie and yell rape. Rape! And so then what happened? Potiphar came home, found out what his wife told him was a He didn't know it was a lie, so he believed it. And what happened to you now? Got sent to jail. Sent to prison right there, man, back in the, back in the prison. <laughs> Down there in the dungeon. <laughs> what a mess! Joseph was, didn't deserve any of this. Is that right? Never done anything wrong. Only did good. Was the best worker in the slave yard. The best worker for Potiphar. And so what happens when, she, when, when Joseph is in jail? What's Joseph going to do there? She's going to tell people's dreams. Okay, go to tell people's dreams. But that wasn't the biggest thing. In the prison, Joseph actually got favor from the prison warden and wanted to do whatever they, she could do. He could do, Joseph. Whatever Joseph could do to make it easier. And guess what? God promoted Joseph again, and Joseph became the ruler over the whole, all the other prisoners Underneath the warden. You did so well. Did you clean toilets there? Yes. Absolutely. Was there bugs? Yes. Rats? Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> did well in the prison. But there was a couple other people in the prison. Uh, Jonathan, come up here. You're a person in the prison. All right. Thank you. I need one more prisoner. Come. Who else is going to be? Come, come, come. Run upstairs. All right. <laughs> There we go. Look at that. Okay, so now, now we have two prisoners. All right. Good, 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 good. And they're in prison as well. And that's your boss, your prison boss. And get, let's see now. Who are you? Okay, so, so you must be the chief food taster in the, for the Pharaoh. Is that who you are? Is that who you are? Yes. Absolutely. And you must be the baker. Look at, look, you're the baker. <laughs> Strong and mighty is the baker, okay? And so we have the, the, the food taster, we have the baker here, and they're in prison because Pharaoh got bugged by you. And now you had a dream, and you had a dream as well. Did you have a dream? Was it a nightmare? No, no. 
It wasn't, no. Okay. You didn't know what it was. It was a dream that uh, something was going to happen. And now you heard that Joseph could tell about dreams. So ask Joseph, tell me, about, tell me my dream. Okay, so, so what was his dream? Do you remember? No, okay, I, I'll remind you. So Joseph, the, the dream that God showed you the interpretation to was that this uh, wonderful servant of Pharaoh was going to be restored to their position in only three days. Isn't that fantastic? Do you like that? Yeah, you're going to go back with Pharaoh right away. Praise God. And he's going to give you his whole, your whole responsibilities back. You're going to be a boss again. Does that sound like a good deal? All right. So what do you want him to do when he goes back to Pharaoh? Remind, remind Pharaoh that your, come on, come on, spit it out. That you're, you, you are there to be released as well. Is that right? Is that what it was? I thought that's what you said. So then that's what, that's what he wanted. So then he trots off, right? And he goes back to uh, Pharaoh's. Pharaoh's back there. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You can take that to Pharaoh. We'll see who eats it. And then now the baker had, he liked what he heard. And now it's your turn. What, what, what did God show you about him? I know it was hard to get out because what was going to happen to the baker, instead of being elevated and back into his position, he was going to lose his head. Very, very sad, very sad, very sad, yeah, yeah. Because now he's going to die. But they released him back to Pharaoh. And that's the last we hear of the baker. He died. Too bad, baker. But then time goes on, and Pharaoh has a dream. In fact, Pharaoh has two dreams. Two dreams Pharaoh had. And so now Pharaoh comes and he doesn't know who can, who can interpret my dreams. Do you remember what those dreams were? I know it's hard when you wake up out of sleep like that. And so the one dream was that uh, you saw some fat cows. Do you remember the fat cows? There were seven of them. Okay, <laughs> fat cows. And then what, what came after the fat cows? Skinny cows came after the fat cows. And you know what happened? The skinny cows went and ate all the fat cows. Wasn't that a crazy dream? Yes. It's a nightmare. And then you had a second one the same night. You went back to sleep. And, and you had this, this dream about um, uh, grain, heads of grain that were fat. And then another seven grain, heads of grain that were all skinny and shriveled up. And the shriveled up ones demolished all the fat ones. Yeah, I well, recall that. Yeah, I know you recall that one. That's crazy, <laughs> crazy. So now you're looking. Anybody, anybody, any of you out here tell dreams? No, nobody, nobody tells dreams? Okay, there's a couple hands, but I don't believe it. So now we come back to the story. And you heard about Joseph. And so you sent for Joseph. Come, Joseph. Joseph got all shaved and cleaned up looking very beautiful, and came and interpreted the dreams. And do you remember what the interpretation was? Um, the first dream? The the, there's going to be the first seven dream. Years seven years of good harvest. Everybody give a hand for seven years of good harvest. <laughs> Absolutely. And then seven years, of famine? seven years of famine. Boo, we don't want famine, right? Seven years of famine. And so now you say, okay, I believe. Do you believe that? That's from God, that dream. I believe it. Yeah, so, so then, what, what do you do? You look, who can manage the affairs of the whole nation so that uh, we make it through those seven years? We bring in and have lots left over after seven good years, and then we make it through the seven bad years. Who, who can I see that would be able to help us? Do you see anybody? Anybody wise enough? Oh, there you go. It's Joseph back into the picture again. What do you say? Oh. 
Got the job? Yes. Louder. They can't hear you at the back. Yes. Yes, what? You got the job. Yay! Put it together for Joseph. So, so what did Joseph do? Joseph went and collected all the food. In fact, when, uh, when the good years were there, Joseph, you were so smart. You've collected 20% of all the grain in the country. You piled it up. You built bigger barns. You took all of those in from the people. And they were so fat. They didn't mind at all. They just recognized that you're so wise doing that. And then what happened? It turned around. And now the people were not getting any grain that they grew. So they came to you. And you helped them, right? And blessed them and took their stuff and all kinds of things happened. But over here in the other land, Joseph's dad and all his brothers were there. And they were hungry. Is that right? Were you hungry? There's no food. Starving? Yeah, so they look, where, where can we go? How can we get food? And so Joseph's, Joseph's dad said, we should go to Egypt. To where? Egypt. Okay, so go to, so what'd you tell your brothers? Go to Egypt now. Get us some food. There you go. Come on. So they all trucked over to Egypt and they came in and they got there. They, they said hi to Pharaoh, but Pharaoh sent them to oh. jo Joseph. And what did they do? They bowed down to Joseph. Now, they didn't recognize Joseph because Joseph had grown up nice and strong and muscular and handsome. And so they didn't recognize him. They still thought he was a kid, but he wasn't. And, but you saw who they were. What did you think? Is now the time you're going to beat him up? No. No, that, not, Joseph wouldn't do that. Joseph. So instead, you, you said, yeah, stand up. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what did you come for? Food, food. Okay, going to give them food? Great, 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 great. So they came big bags of food, big bags, and their servants got involved, giving them big bags of food. And then you whispered to the servant to put their money back in the bags. And then you sent them off. See you. God bless you. Have a great time. And they went off, and they found money in their bags when they got home. And they thought, oh, no, what's going on? Yeah, dad wanted the money. No, he didn't. He just got the food. And so life continues to go on. And then it's time again where what happened? You ate all the food. Yeah. Now what? You're hungry again. So now you come back again, back to Joseph. And we, we know the story, but now we come to the end of the story. Now they bow down again. And then they, they say, wow, we, we didn't know there was money there in our bags. That's right, it was there. Oh no, forgive us, please. Oh no, no. And so now you reveal who you really are to your family. Hey guys, I'm Joseph. <laughs> okay, what's going to happen now? What do you think is going to happen now? <laughs> you're going to get beat. You're in big trouble, right? Right, right. But Joseph, stand up. Joseph said, stand up, stand up. Instead, Joseph gave you big hugs. Family hug, everybody in family hug. Pharaoh loved this. Mm, family time is good, right, Pharaoh? Yeah, really good stuff. Oh, yeah. And so then they said, we thought we were going to get killed because of what we did. And Joseph said, um, what you meant for evil, God turned around and brought it for good. Amen? Amen. Isn't God good? Yes. Do you love our helpers on stage? Okay, let me see if I have enough left for you. Take one and you can sit down. Thank you, Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. Everybody got some but it's the dead. Oh, he got one as well. Okay, great. Praise God. All right, so all this is in the book of Genesis. Thank you, young people. Do you get the picture in your mind of what's going on? Do you get your picture on the character of Joseph? My, my message today is actually, is actually called, um, You Can Change the World. And so it's the reality that God has a plan for every person. And it is always good. Wake up your neighbor, tell him, God's plan is always good. It's always good for you. God has a plan for you. It's always good. 
So it doesn't matter whether you're here in the house or whether you're at your house. God always has a plan. And He loves to reveal that plan, but not the whole picture. He loves to just kind of give you a, a snapshot of what it could look like. Is that true? How many have had God reveal something like that to you? That something for the future that He has for you? Yeah, many, many of us have. What do you do when God shows you something? Do you go to your brothers or sisters or your neighbors or your boss and tell them, especially when they don't like you in the first place? No, 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 no. We're to go to those of like precious faith, ones who really care about us, ones who will put their faith with us. And, and then we understand that, that in the midst of that time, God will be at work with us. He will help us. He will strengthen us. He will give us what we need to be able to accomplish it. Let me re read you a couple, um, a couple verses here. In Genesis chapter 37, it talks about the, the dreams that were there. And in, in verse 5 to 7 and then 9 and 10. So you can read about that. Does God still give people dreams today? Does he still speak to us today? In a variety of ways. Sometimes in a message like this. God will wake up a dream that you've heard a long time ago or words that you've heard of encouragement from, from many years ago where God will bring them back to your mind so that God can remind you that He has not changed His mind, that He still knows the plan He has in store for you and that it is good. Now, many times difficulties come just like they came in Joseph's life. Many, I, I don't know if any of you have been thrown in, in a prison or a, or a pit or become a slave because, I, I don't know, but I know many have been persecuted. Many of you have come from places where the pressure has been so intense that it's been difficult. Many of you have come from places where often the, the food was not sufficient for the family. But God did not change his mind. He loves to reposition us as we are cooperating with him to be able to fulfill our destiny. <laughs> Many years ago, uh, I, I was maybe 19 or 20, and I saw a vision of myself standing before a large group of people in a church preaching. And I'd never done that. I, it was hard for me to even imagine that that was the case. So I did not go and tell and announce to everybody because <laughs> they knew me already. So I didn't announce to them, but I held it in my heart and I believed that what God said He would do in due season, at the right time, when I was ready, when the situation was ready for me to do that. I didn't try to run ahead, just the same as, as Joseph didn't try to get her brothers, his brothers, to bow down. Instead, you allow God to be God and orchestrate history in your favor. So when I, I looked at this, <laughs> uh, my second point is God's plan for you involves other people. Say that, other people. Some good and some not good. You, you, you mean God will put difficult people in your lives? Sometimes he does. I just don't want to be one of them. So I'll try to encourage you in things. But guess what? Sometimes people come into your lives that are very difficult, like those brothers were, very challenging to you, like uh, Potiphar's wife was, that they'll try to tempt you, they'll attack you, they'll say words about you that are lies. How many have ever had that happen? Come on, be honest today. Many, many, many of us have had that happen. I've had that happen myself. I had a pastor that I that had just come into our church as an interim pastor, came to our house. He said, I'm available for lunch. Nobody invited him. So we did. So we brought him home for lunch, and we had a nice lunch together. And then he, he said, yeah, the others have told me about you, and I want you to know, Randy, that you are nothing to me. You're nobody. You have no authority. You have no position. You're no one to me. Wasn't that nice introduction in my own home? <laughs> the food was good, too, so it wasn't that. <laughs> so what do you do in a situation like that? I kind of laughed, actually. It didn't, and I said, I'm not trying to be anyone to you. That's, what I will do is I'll serve you the best I can, and I'll do everything I can to, to help you to succeed 
in the position you're at as pastor. I'll work with you. I'll do whatever I can. And uh, guess what happened? <laughs> uh, nine months later, uh, he went to start a new church in another city. And he invited me to come as his associate pastor. So, so I saw where God turned it around because I didn't take it as anything against me. It was just words. It was somebody I respected. But I already knew how God saw me. I already knew who I was. And I knew I would never try to hurt him. But I would only try to lift him up and do whatever I could do. And because I humbled myself under the mighty hand of God, God gave me opportunity to be elevated and to work with him. I said, no, thank you. It wasn't time. It wasn't my time. It wasn't my place. It wasn't my position. And I knew that. But I appreciated how God turned it all around. Now, what happens if you go and fight against someone? Now you break the relationship. You may destroy God's plan. Because sometimes God will use those who are against you to perfect your character, to, to demonstrate who you really are in Christ. Will you become offended if, if people come against you? Or do you know in whom you have believed and are persuaded that he is able to keep that, that he's placed within you until that day? So Joseph knew that was not offended, was not, did not fight against Potiphar's wife, did not fight against his brothers, but instead understood that God's plan involves other people. Some good and some bad. So don't fight the bad ones. Stay clear as you can. Invite the good ones in close. Rejoice in all of them. Praise the Lord for those that God brings into your life. And if you think it's the devil, it may in fact be God that is perfecting you. Helping you to develop your godly character. Draw on the life on the inside of you. And watch what God does. <laughs> wow. So our memory verse, uh, we like to do that is uh, Genesis chapter 39, verse 2, and it says, The Lord was with Joseph. So he succeeded in everything he did as he served in the home of the Egyptian master. So Joseph chose to overcome evil with good. As a slave, he did not see himself as a slave. He saw himself as a servant of the Most High God. Consequently, he worked as unto the Lord, and God promoted him. When he was thrown in the prison, in the dungeon, he did not see himself as a prisoner. He saw himself as a servant of the Most High God to serve in that capacity, to help the warden there to do whatever was necessary, to be able to make things function the best way in the dungeon. If your boss is troubling you, if it's a difficult situation that you're in, whether your home, your neighborhood, your employment, how will you respond to it? Will you allow it to affect how you see yourself? Or will you say, no, I'm a child of the Most High God. It doesn't matter what other people say about me. I will serve the Lord with gladness, and I will work as unto the Lord. And I'll do whatever I can do to lift those around me up. Not to put myself down, but just to lift them up. Because I am a servant of Almighty God. When you have that environment, my friend, when that is your mindset and that is your commitment, God can lift you up. He can raise you up. And He can use the, the most troublesome person to open a door for you. Imagine. Imagine. How would Joseph's brothers ever bow down to him if he stayed at home? How, how, how could that ever happen? It wouldn't have happened. But he had to get to a different place. 
God knew what was going to happen in the future. God did not put it in the hearts of his brothers. But God used the situation to get Joseph in the position where he could fulfill his destiny. God wants to help you to fulfill your destiny. <laughs> so will God fulfill his good plan for you? How many would say yes? God will. Do you believe God will? Do you tell him that? Thank you, Lord. I will fulfill all you've written about me. Does it matter what happens around you? Does it matter what, what happens in society or in the world with economic challenges or any plague that comes out? Are you determined that God will fulfill his will in your life? As we live that way, my friends, God's will shall be done. The, let me read what Pharaoh said. Since God has revealed the meaning of my dreams to you, clearly no one else in, as, is as intelligent or wise as you are. You'll be in charge of my court and all my people will take orders from you. Only I, sitting on my throne, will have a higher rank than you. So what do we need to do? Keep God's vision, dream, in our hearts. Never lose it. Meditate on it. Thank God for it. If you have a paper Bible, write it in the Bible. Write the date when God spoke to you. Keep it in front of you so that you can always remember what God says. When others are yelling and others are pushing, always go back to what God has said. Is he stronger? Is he greater? Is he the creator? Can he change things? Can he turn around? He can turn the hearts of kings, the Bible tells us. So he can do it. When bad things happen, don't give up. Say that with me. D don't give up. Tell your neighbor, don't give up. Don't give up when bad things. Don't give up when the doctors say, no, you're not going to make it. Don't give up when you have to have operations. Don't give up when finances goes down. D never give up. Always understand, God can turn it around. When you have lemons... Make lemonade. Okay. <laughs> and then give thanks for those in your life. Even if they're ones that are difficult. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Give thanks for them. Perhaps you will be the one that helps them see the light of Jesus Christ. Through your attitude towards them. <laughs> When bad things happen, don't focus on them. And don't even focus on the bad people. Instead, focus on God and what he's done. Does he have a future? We have a future. And a hope. Amen? So God helps us with that. Keep a good attitude and serve God and serve others. Add value to people around you. In a difficult employment situation, Add value to those around. Look for opportunities to do good instead of get caught up, especially with others around that want to complain. Be a voice for whatever is good instead of the evil that others see. Question, how old was Joseph when, he, when his brothers sold him into slavery? Who said 17? Well done. How old was Joseph when he got promoted to Pharaoh's assistant? You're not supposed to answer, <laughs> Pastor Finley. 30 years of age. It took 13 years for God's will to be fulfilled in his life. Does it matter how long it is? Our time on earth is... Just, just that fast compared to all of eternity. So we don't get focused on delays. Some delays are actually divine delays because your character is still being formed. So never fight against God. And understand God always has a good plan for you. And if you cooperate as Joseph did, it shall come to pass. Amen? Let's lift our hands and just start to worship him. Father, we thank you for your word. 
We thank you, Lord, for working within us to will and to do of your good pleasure. Lord, even when trying time come, even when things go different than what we want, what we desire, what we think it should be, Lord, help us to keep our focus on you. You are our leader. You are our guide. You are our God who cares for us more than we even know. So, Lord, we put our lives into your hands. And we ask you, Lord, to lead us and guide us every single day. Help us to have the heart of Jesus Christ, who came as the great servant to seek and to save, but came humbly as a servant. Help us to have a servant's mentality of heart to lift up others around us in the name of Jesus and boldly declare your goodness and your plan for all of humanity. Lord, use our lives to impact the lives of others. You've chosen us to change the world. We're world shakers, Lord. Help us to follow you day by day with great joy in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much for being with us today. I trust that the Word of God impacted your heart just the way it did mine. Remember, if you haven't subscribed yet, you can do that right now. And then tell a friend so they can join us and be online with us each week. If you'd like to help us be able to continue this ministry around the world, you can do so by clicking the link below. And I believe God's going to bless you as you bless many others. Have a great week. God bless you.